Hi, cat. <laughs> Come and get some mango, baby. Self-awareness is a superpower. My name is Kathy LaDonna. Welcome to Soul and Vibration. I hope the free thinkers are doing well. And if you're not doing well, I'm happy to remind you that you are the most powerful person that you know. You are the most powerful person that you know because only you can create your reality. So this pick a card reading is what you need to know right now. And we have three different groups. And here they are. We have group number one, lizard. Group number two, Phoenix. Group number three, Fire Ant. Take your time, look at the cards, see which one is calling out to you. Pause the video if you have to. Let's get into the reading. Hello, group number one. You guys selected the lizard energy. Right upon selecting this, this card, immediately what came to mind is that what it is that you're waiting for will soon present itself to you, be revealed to you, or the opportunity is on its way. So be patient. Immediately upon looking at the lizard anim the lizard card, I got the feeling of someone traveling for a while when it comes to something or working on something for a long time. And you're about to hit a certain season within your life. And with this season, this is a season of abundance, a season where things are just going to be flowing to you and coming into you. I get the feeling that uh, some of you or a lot of you who chose this group is considering relocating. Maybe you're moving from your apartment, your home or city or even state, but there's some kind of relocating that's happening. And if that's something that your intuition has been calling you to do, then definitely trust it and trust the process. Because when you do this, things are going to really work out for you. It's, it's a situation where people are set up and in place to receive you, even though they themselves didn't know that they signed up for that. It's a kind of situation where every door that you go to will open. Well, the ones that are meant for your highest good. Don't push, don't, don't push anything and trust the process. If ever you have to push, kick, scream, or yell, then that's not where you want to be. You don't want to force anyone to let you in. You don't want to guilt trip anyone to let you in. And when I say let you in, this could be in a new relationship. Maybe you're dating someone and they're not finding enough time for you. And you find yourself finding clever ways to get them to spend time with you. That's not natural and that's not authentic and that's not the kind of connection you want to be in. And that's for a small few because when it comes to the majority, I see the majority moving into a new place in life, moving into a new direction, moving into a whole new lifestyle, a whole new environment. The new moon that we recently had in Scorpio on October 25th, that moon really activated something within you where on that day something clicked and from that thing clicking you have a new perspective a new desire or realizing that you're ready to commit to something new and this new thing that you're ready to commit to is actually something major something that's going to play a big role in your life for years to come. This is not a fly by night, spirit is saying situation. This is something that is going to play a part in your life for the rest of your life. This next decision that you're about to make. 
I've been saying on this channel a lot, make your next move your best move. So much is happening in the world. I try not to dwell on the negativity of what's happening in the world because I'm aware that we can share the same space and have two totally different experiences. Just because there's drama happening in the world doesn't mean that we have to dwell on that drama and experience that drama. Just because there's drama happening in the world doesn't mean that we can't have and experience peace. So the four cards that I'm going to be selecting, the first one represents you. The second card reflects an area within your life. The third card represents challenges and the fourth card represents blessings. Okay. Wow. Okay. So when it comes to the card that came out, this first card represents you and the king of pentacles is showing up to represent you in the reversal position. So with the king of pentacles showing up to represent you in the reversal position, this is talking about you not feeling confident within yourself to provide for yourself. You not feeling confident to take action when it comes to certain things, things that will create more financial security and stability in the long run. Even though the king of pentacles come out having to do with earth energy like Virgo, Capricorn, and Taurus, you don't have to be Virgo, Capricorn, or Taurus. You could just be someone who is practical, someone who is traditional, someone who is more of what we would call a, is it a left brain, a right brain thinker, someone who is more mathematic, someone who tends to look at things in a more practical way. It's like the kind of people who call themselves realists, but often I'll say more like pessimistic. But also, too, what comes out is Taurus energy. So, wow, Taurus energy came out the number 12 and Pluto. So I see a combination of energy here. And when I see the number 12 energy having to do with 12th house energy, this could give me the feeling of someone who doesn't trust their intuition. It's like someone with sun and 12th house energy. You don't have to have that. But someone who at an early age may have been shamed when it comes to imagination, intuition, and some people could come from a background where crazy or looking crazy was a weapon, weaponized to discourage someone from speaking their truth or being confident about who they are. So whenever that happens, a person finds themselves dotting their I's and crossing their T's and living life in a certain way because they're afraid to really be crazy because maybe that was something that was used to keep them in order. Because in some households and in some families, parenting will look different. And it's not always from a place of evil or nastiness. Sometimes some people just don't know how to parent. There's no rule book. There's no guidance. You just figure it out as you go. And unfortunately, there are people who are not who don't like confrontation. And I see confrontation as something that could be beneficial. When I say confrontation, I'm not saying physical violence or even verbal violence where people are putting each other down. But I believe in the importance of people expressing their feelings and going back and forth until there is understanding on both part. Because if people feel comfortable to express themselves, get heard and understand the other person, then the relationship gets to transform and evolve. But, you know, that's not always the case. With Pluto, the number 12 energy coming out, a lot of you could be counselors, therapists, psychologists, or work in the field of healing or being some kind of guide to others when it comes to mental level or what's coming to mind is the person who wants to be an accountant or work in accounting but haven't fully yet mastered their financial situation. But don't worry. I believe the, pe the best healers, teachers are people who are coming from a place of personal experience. I would love for the person who had a bad relationship with money, finances, savings to learn how and then turn around and teach me because there's many parts to mastering things. 
Yes, there's the practical side where we go to school, we, learn, we read the books and we learn the fundamentals, but then there's also the psychological side to everything. And often that's the missing piece of the puzzle that stops a person from fully evolving and becoming a master in a certain area of their lives. So when it comes to you, you guys are definitely working on your psychology in relations to money. If you're struggling financially, it all goes back to your psychology, how you see yourself in the world, how you see yourself in relations to being worthy and deserving. Are there conditions when it comes to your worth and your and you being deserving? I used to think that. I used to feel like I have to work hard for everything, work really hard for everything to the point where I wouldn't even allow other people to give to me because I felt like I would now owe them because they have given me something. I feel like this group might be able to relate to that. When it comes to the area of your life, we have the 11, the number 11, which could be 11th house, Virgo energy, which could also tie into say six house work and daily activities. We also have Uranus energy, which can tie back into also 11th house. So something is falling apart when it comes to friendship, friend groups, or even your work schedule or routine or the service that you offer others. Maybe with this group, when it comes to your financial situation, you guys don't know how to conserve your finances in the sense that you guys are super save a hose or super save whoever. And that used to be me. And I struggled with that for a long time. When it came to spending money on myself, I would always need to make sure it's for a good cause. I would always need to make sure that the money that I'm spending on myself, I'm not wasting it. And whatever I'm spending on is something that's going to bring more finances in my world or is it even worth it? Is it too much? But when it came time for me to do for others, I would show up and show out. But now I realize that comes from a lack of self-worth. And now I show up and show out for myself when it comes to whatever it is that I want. I still like to give to others. I love giving and love helping. But now that my self-worth isn't a tie to it, I'm able to give with discernment. When it comes to challenges, the Ace of Cups is here. So I'm getting the feeling when it comes to this group, you guys don't know how to allow other people to love you, other people to celebrate you, other people to support you. And that goes back to the Tower energy here dealing with area of your life. I get the feeling that you guys are holding on to a relationship, a connection, or something that has been expired. And holding on to it in hopes that things will work out. Maybe the other person will come around. Or maybe some miraculous thing will happen within the universe. And you guys will just be perfect together. And end up happily ever after. But I've been doing a lot of observing of, say, the stock market. And I noticed that the stocks never move up in a straight line. It's always a zigzag and a back and forth. And for the first time talking to you guys in this video, I'm reflecting and seeing life that way. Nothing moves in a straight line. Everything moves in a zigzag back and forth. You take two steps forward and you might take a half one back. And you take three more forward and you take one back. It's a back and forth movement, but you're progressing forward. When it comes to this relationship connection or thing that you're holding on to, if you pay attention, it hasn't been a consistent step forward. If you pay attention, a lot of what makes this relationship great is your imagination and the potential of it. Maybe when you first met your person, they showed you their representative and since then you've consistently seen the real them but you're holding on hoping that they'll get back to that representative when that was just them putting their best foot forward when it comes to the blessings in the situation the strength card is what comes out as the outcome 
And with the strength card coming out as the outcome, but in the reversal position, this tells me that whatever question you had in mind when you picked this reading, it's helping you to become stronger. It's helping you to recognize your worth. It's helping you to show up to relationships and connections moving forward in a whole different light, in a whole different way. It's helping you learn how to pick people better, but it's not even about people. It's helping you to learn about you. What is it about you? Why you allow certain things? What is it about you? Why certain things are okay? And it's not even that they're okay, but the way you allow it or justify it says that it's okay. So the strength card and the outcome just talks about how this connection helps you to see things within yourself that you can't see. It's interesting, I started this reading off focusing on relocation, maybe even getting a new job. But what I'm getting is that the collective who selected this is in between a relationship, a connection, in between something that goes from one extreme to the next, in between a connection where you find yourself being more like a helpmate. And if it's not a connection, it's a work situation where you're holding on even though you're over it, or it's the living situation where you find yourself plateau. It's like someone trying to lose weight and they are stuck at a certain point and no matter what they do, they're just stuck there. It could be your living situation where something about it, you feel like you should be grateful for it, but something about it just feels like something's missing and you feel your heart calling you for more and you're just ready to take that leap and listen. When it comes to a spirit animal to represent moving forward is the cosmic egg. And with the cosmic egg showing up as a spirit animal guidance for moving forward, this tells me that visualization is really important for this group. Visualization in the sense of having a clear visual of what it is that you want to experience in your life next. Sitting down and writing out what your future something looks like. So if you're writing out what your future partner looks like, if you want them to have good credit, you better have good credit or be working on that good credit. Whatever it is that you want them to have, you better be that because we attract people who reflect us in some way or the next. It's not always that we attract people that are reflect us in the sense that you're a giver and you attract the giver. We, ref we attract people who reflect us in the sense that you're a giver, but you don't know how to receive. So you only attract takers, that kind of thing. Where when you know how to receive, which this energy here, a challenge, allowing other people to really see into you, pouring to you and give to you. Because I get with this group, maybe like when I experienced the childhood situation and how people raise different or aren't taught how. There could be a situation where you may have felt rejected by the home, the family, or even the mother. And from that, whenever you feel like people are tolerating you, that feels like love or makes you feel like this person cares for me or is here for me. But you have to see it different because you have so much to offer. You're always the one giving, never receiving. So if you can't receive, then you'll attract people who can't give because that's a perfect match for you. But if you allow yourself to equally give and receive, then you attract a connection where you guys go back and forth effortlessly outdoing each other with love and affection. It's interesting that this turned into a love reading, but I guess that's what was necessary. But with the cosmic egg energy, again, write down what whatever area of your life that you're listening for, write down what that ideal version of your life looks like. And if there's anything that you want within a partner that you have yet to allow within yourself, make a conscious effort to work on that. And when I say allow within yourself, a lot of the times we can attract partners who 
are emotionally unavailable. And maybe that's a reflection of, of our emotional unavailability, or it could be a reflection of the fact that maybe your parents were emotionally unavailable. So being with someone who reminds you of home feels safe. It feels like what you deserve. Where someone who is emotionally available and praises you and tells you how amazing you are, that person might feel cringy. But it's not even that that person's cringy, it's that there's some things that they're reflecting within you that might need your attention. Group number one, such a pleasure sharing this message with you. If you'd like to book a tarot card reading, check out the exclusive weekly content that's located on Patreon only. The links for that is in the description box below. If you're still here with me, I'd love to hear about it. Please let me know by dropping me a red heart in the comment box below. I would love to hear from you. Love yourself as if your life depended on it because it does. Take care of yourself and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Hello, group number two. You guys selected the Phoenix energy and normally the Phoenix energy reflects transformation. But what I'm seeing as I'm looking at the Phoenix energy, the wings in the air would remind me of someone's hands in the air. Someone feeling like they're fed up and they've, they're, they they want to give up because they don't know what to do next about a current situation. Also, to what's coming to mind when I look at this energy is a refusal, refusing transformation. It's like refusing therapy, refusing help. And that's interesting because who would do that? But I find a lot of the times as I read natal charts and look at a certain thing, sometimes certain things in our lives when it comes to our perspective is set up a certain way where in order for us to transform in one area, we, we would need to acknowledge certain things. And some things are hard to acknowledge because to acknowledge this or that might mean this or that about something that we don't want this or that to be meant about it. What I mean by that is, say for example, someone came from a community or a, a household or a family that was they felt wasn't supportive in ways that they needed to be supported. But to even acknowledge that feels like you're being ungrateful because your parents worked hard. They put a roof over your head and you were safe and you had clothes on your back. So to even entertain the thoughts of not being supported or to entertain the thoughts of them rejecting who you want to identify as within this world. And when I say identify as, that could mean the lifestyle you choose for yourself or the career path you choose. But them not supporting that makes you feel like a horrible person to acknowledge that you feel some type of way about that. So because you can't acknowledge or tell the truth about how you feel about that or anything, then there's no way you can heal from something you won't acknowledge. So within this group, the energy that's coming up as what it is that you need to know right now is people having a hard time healing because they won't acknowledge something. It could be acknowledging the truth about a relationship dynamic. It could be acknowledging the truth about how your partner really makes you feel. Because acknowledging the truth about how your partner really makes you feel, you might need to have a serious conversation with them. You might need to confront them. And confrontations don't have to be negative or violent. It's just people uh, wanting to be heard and making a conscious effort to hearing the other person. And people willing to sit in a situation until everyone feels understood or put it off until another day until you guys have the time to really give the your all and attention into a situation. But I get a big feeling of someone refusing 
to acknowledge a reality in something. I get a sense of self delusion, like someone deluding themselves because to acknowledge the reality of something will require some kind of change that you're probably not ready to make. And it's not that you're not ready to make this change. It's just that you've gotten to be comfortable in your current situation. The vibe that I'm getting from a lot of you who selected this group are people who are strongly associated with the number two energy. You could be born on the second the second, the 20th, the number two is in your birthday or the month or the year life path. The number two is prevalent somewhere or even the number nine energy. The number four is also strong or Libra energy, Libra moon, Libra sun, moon, rising, ascendant energy. Those are some of what's coming through. But of course, let's get into the cards to see more. So I'm going to be selecting four cards as usual. Well, I select a little more than that. But when it comes to these, it's going to be four. The first one represents you. The second is area within your life. The third is challenges. The fourth is blessings. And I like that this is a blessing and I'll explain why in a minute. So when it comes to the energy reflecting you, the number two did come up again. Also to the hermit energy in the reversal position. The hermit energy in the reversal position for me is, is a reflection of what I mentioned about avoiding healing because of what a person will have to face or, a tr or the truth that will have to be said. Truth that others might not want to hear. Truth that could affect family legacies and in a small in some situations or not even necessarily legacy but reputation for a small few when it comes to say the hermit energy re reflecting representing you uranus the number two and sag energy you are someone who is very futuristic someone who likes to learn new things someone who likes to travel whether it's through books or literally go places i get someone who enjoys learning about other people like interestingly enough i can see this group being the kind of people who want to be counselors therapists coaches and things like that and it's interesting when i see people who want to play that role in society but don't want to be in the seat of the person who's getting help meaning the person who wants to take on a role of helping others but needs to also get help it's like the person who wants to save, but then themselves need saving, needs helping. I feel like when a person is willing to do the work or get the help, this makes them even more effective to the people that they help. Because instead of seeming condescending in certain cases or even getting impatient, they're able to have patience because they realize how hard the process was to evolve over this thing, to get over this thing, to release this thing, whatever this thing is. So yeah, when it comes to your energy, you're very nurturing, but nurturing in a way that is different. Mothering in a way that is different. And even for a male, nurturing in a way that is different. I get the kind of person that is well connected to a certain extent, even if you choose to say you don't have a lot of friends and you keep to yourself, you're someone who people would like to be your friends, your friend or connect with you, I should say. And with Uranus and the and Sag there, you're someone who is open, very diverse when it comes to the people that you associate yourself with. You associate yourself with a huge range of people, you know, all kinds of people from different backgrounds, which also teaches you so much about the world. So that also makes you well-traveled, not necessarily through books, but through the cultures of the people who you associate yourself with. 
When it comes to area of your life, the number three comes out, third house, Aries, and the sun. So this could be a, a major shift in the area of your life having to do with your siblings, something with your siblings, your family member, or even your father, or something with your siblings, your family member, father figure in relations to yourself. For some of you, maybe you feel like your family don't support you enough, don't support your identity, who you define as. When I say define as, it could be your career choice, how you want to live your life. It could be anything. When it comes to challenges, we have the five of the seven of wands there. And with the seven of wands in the challenging position, this tells me that you feel like someone who always has to fight someone who is always on defense mode. And I could see that with Aries coming up with the sun and the number three in area of your life. So with say this area of your life, this could give me the feeling that when it came to your siblings, you guys fought a lot or a very competitive energy. For some people I see having a lot of siblings or it seemed like a lot because maybe there wasn't enough resource for everyone. So because of that, I'm getting fighting over clothes, fighting over clean clothes for someone type of situation because you guys were within age range to share the clothes. I'm also seeing something where it's like, and this could be like a one person, but having a sibling that would wet the bed and deny wetting the bed or something about wetting the bed and clean clothes would get wet. I know that doesn't sound right or make sense, but the way I'm imagining it is say in the room, like say you shared a room so it was constantly messy or some, or maybe they wet the clothes and put it in with the good clothes. But something about in the morning, like sh shuffling through finding clean clothes and there were pee clothes amongst clean clothes. I don't know why that's coming through, but something about the family and the siblings is coming through and not being able to, choosing not to juggle something when it comes to the family, the siblings. This could mean for some people you were taking care of yourself and constantly having to pull out money to take care of things for the family, your, your, your relatives, I should say, because your family is your children. If you choose to have children, if you have children, your partner, but for your relatives, you no longer want to juggle taking on their responsibilities. Maybe some of you come from a background where you might have some family members that make that, that don't make the best decisions. And then from them not making the best decisions, you have to show up and fix it. But there's no appreciation and, in fact, probably resentment from you showing up and fixing it because it's who do you think you are. And then it goes back to this energy where you feel like you're constantly defending yourself, even when you're helping, you're fighting them to let them help you type of situation. And I can see how this can affect other connections and relationships where it's your nature to always want to be on the defense because you're used to someone always either trying to come for you or attack you type of vibe. When it comes to say blessings, the devil card in the reversal is blessings because with the devil card in reverse, you're not willing to sell your soul. And when I say sell your soul, that sounds a bit extreme, but sell your soul, meaning you won't sell yourself out for anything. And when I say anything, it's the kind of person that lives within their means because you saw people make decisions where they didn't live within their means. So you won't allow that to be you. I get the kind of person and I'm looking back at Uranus reflecting your energy the kind of person that says, I'm not going to be like them. It's like you grew up or you saw a certain kind of behavior or you saw certain things and you made it clear to yourself that you're not going to be anything like that. So it could be a situation where you see the people drink a lot or do certain substances or do certain things. And from them, you learn from their exam, you learn from their mistakes and you didn't have to repeat them. 
which makes you an extremely wise person. And when it comes to, say, the spirit animal to close out and guide this message, it's the hawk energy. And the hawk energy talks about seeing things from a bird's eye view and getting a clear perspective. I think when it comes to your life or your current situation, you're so zoomed in to the point that it's hard to see the big picture. So this energy is telling you to zoom out so you can see the big picture. Zoom out so you can see the big picture instead of focusing on the details of something. But I go back to the, the Phoenix energy and what I mentioned, not allowing something to transform because it's hard to see some kind of truth in it or accept something in it to transform. And this brings me back again to the person who acknowledges that they're an addict in order to start getting help. Of course, it doesn't have to be that for some, but it's acknowledging the truth about something. And acknowledging the truth about something is your truth, how you experienced it. And it doesn't mean you're ungrateful. It's just saying, this is how I experienced it. How do I work past this? How do I see, how do I acknowledge what I experienced and get the proper tools to push past this? Because when it comes to you, the, you guys that selected this, I feel like most of you are very guarded, so guarded to the point that your experiences are very limited because of how guarded you are. So that's why it would be really beneficial to say, for some, get the therapy that you need where you can sit down and pour out the truth and acknowledge certain situations. When it comes to, say, getting therapy, it could mean when it comes to getting therapy, it is important to interview and pick your therapist as as if like you're hiring someone, the best person for the company. But then it's also important for us to know that it is within our nature to sometimes attract certain people who are familiar, who feel like home. But you know what? If you're someone who's looking to get therapy or any kind of help or something to work through, whatever it is that you want to work through, set an intention that you will find someone who will help you. Just go in knowing that whoever you find will help you and everything is going to work out in your favor. Just focus on the outcome and everything else will everything else will work itself out. Just focus on the outcome and everything else will work itself out. But when it comes to this group, I could definitely see how it would be beneficial to have some kind of a mediator in some situations, especially if this is between you and a family member or a partner, but someone else to come in and mediate the situation because I'm getting the feeling that when it comes to this group, you guys are afraid of confrontation or confrontation can be seen in a really negative light when it doesn't have to be negative but instead an opportunity for people to evolve and grow together. Group number two, such a pleasure sharing this with you. If you would like to book a private reading with me or learn about the exclusive content that's posted weekly only on Patreon, those links are, are in the description box below. If you're still here with me, I'd love to hear about it. Please let me know by dropping me an orange heart in the comment box below. I would love to hear from you. Love yourself as if your life depended on it because it does. Take care of yourself and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Hello, group number three. Group number three, you guys selected the fire ant and immediately upon looking at the fire ant card, I felt scattered. I felt so scattered in the sense that I didn't want to do anything. When I say scattered, my thoughts just want to focus on other things, everything, anything, and nothing. It feels like a plastic bag playing in the wind with, and of course a plastic bag playing in the wind, 
has no clear intention or sense of direction. And even though deep down you might have a clear intention for something or a sense of direction, the energy that I felt immediately upon touching this card was one that felt like scattered, felt all over the place, not sure which way to turn or what to do next. And for me personally, when I reflect on myself, whenever I feel like this, I always feel like this whenever I'm being called to make certain changes in my life. And those changes are a bit terrifying for me. So I redirect my thoughts onto other things or so I try to do. But of course, my thoughts won't go to other things. My thoughts are gonna go to everything, anything and nothing. Because the thing that I should be focused on, I don't wanna think about that right now because I feel powerless thinking about that right now because there's nothing I can do about that right. There's nothing I can do about that right now. So say, for example, in the future, you're deciding to start your own business or walk away from something. In this moment, you're anticipating the thoughts of that future, anticipating that moment when it comes wondering if everything is going to play out in your favor. It's thoughts like those. And those thoughts are overwhelming. They're exhausting. So this moment feels like an enemy because I, I feel powerless in it, thinking about the future that I have no control over. That's what this energy gives me. That's what this energy reminds me of. So what do I tell myself in a situation like this? as I'm telling you, telling myself, just relax. What could you do in this moment to make things better for the future? What are all the things that you can do and are you doing them? But on top of all the things that you can do, are you relaxing? Are you resting well? Are you eating well? Are you taking good care of yourself? Because in the process of trying to escape this moment and neglecting yourself, when that moment comes, you won't be the best version of yourself because you try to escape yourself in this moment. So I say that to you and remind that to myself too. Also, too, when I look at the fire ant card, I think of the five of wands in the upright position. And in that tarot card or on that tarot card, you see everybody's wand is in the air. It's the kind of energy where it's like, look at me, me first, here I am. So when it comes to this group, you might find yourself feeling restless because you feel overlooked. You could have been working on something for the longest and it just feels like, what's the point? You are experiencing growth or maybe the growth is stagnant. So you ask yourself sometimes, am I deluding myself? Am I tripping to think that this is going to work or this is going somewhere? And you just have to understand that things work out within seasons and you are in a season within your life right now that requires reflecting and resting. You are in an in-between season, a resting and reflecting season. Resting meaning in the past you took some major action and you've done everything you possibly could do. So you're pretty much maintaining what it is that you've done in the past when you took the big risk, you made the big move. So right now you're just resting, but also reflecting because you're being called to take action again. And that's also part of the reason for the antsiness, hence the fire ants, the restless scattered energy. So you're being called to move again, but your next move needs to be your best move. And in order for your next move to be your best move, it is important for you to be still and not make any unnecessary moves which can result in wasting action, wasting energy or even finances. I'm 
I'm going to be selecting four of these cards. The first one is going to reflect your energy. The second, the area of your life. The third, challenges. The fourth, blessings. Whoa. It fell between the number five and six. Let's see where it falls this time. The number four. So when it comes to say your energy, the page of cups comes up to re represent you. So with the page of cups coming up to represent you, you could be Pisces, Scorpio, Cancer. You don't have to be any of that. But what I am getting from the Page of Cups is someone who is very creative, someone who is very artistic. You are someone who also always subscribe to the area of art. Some of you could be fashion designers, interior designers, even marketers, people who are good with social media cre creations like bloggings, content creator. That's the vibe that I'm, I'm getting from this group. Or even people that work in law, legality, some kind of, I wanted to say mediumship, but that's not what I wanted to say. Mediumship, mentorship. But what I wanted to say is mediator, mediator in some kind of fair counsel, being of support or guidance to others. Some people even working with children. The number three Venus and Libra energy came up. Some of you guys could be singers, rappers, I've never, singers, rappers, you just never know. Rappers, people who create beats, people who create music, people who are artistic, some kind of an artistic individual. And with Venus and Libra here, there's something about the way how you present yourself, something about the way you represent yourself. So when it comes to the way you present or represent yourself, it's super cute. You're super cute in the sense that the Venus and the Libra energy tells me that you have a nice sense of style. But your style is also youthful and unpredictable. Youthful and unpredictable because you're not a fashion victim. And I love this. And when I say fashion victim, you're not the kind of person that walks into the store and buys what's on the mannequin. You kind of dress like this guy. <laughs> and when I say dress like that guy, not exactly like that guy. But if you notice, that guy is dressed in a way that reflects him. Dressed in a way that reflects his inner world, his youthfulness, his artistry. So that's what I'm getting from you guys who selected this group, where your style is not one that could fit in a box. Your style is like no one else's. What you guys remind me of is people who are very resourceful and your resourcefulness is reflected on the way how you even carry yourself, the way you dress. But with Venus and Libra energy there, you smell good. And also too, some of you guys might like brands, but even though you wear brands or labels, you wear it in a way that's unique. You don't just buy a brand or a label because it's a brand or a label. You buy it because it looks good on you. So when you're wearing something is because it complements you, not because someone said to wear it because I get a, a rebellious spirit when it comes to you guys. But the way you rebel is so you rebel in a way that's not aggressive. You rebel in a way that's charming is charismatic in a way where other people are like okay you're interesting that kind of vibe not in a way where people take you or find anything you do to be the least bit offensive when it comes to the area in your life that's changing we have scorpio we have the north node we have the number four and the hierophant in the reversal position a lot of you guys could find yourself not renewing the lease at your lip and at your home not not renew, not renewing the lease where you're living or some people could be selling their home or choosing to move home or relocate from the home space 
Also, too, with this energy here, this could talk about a person's mental. Mental as in how you deal with your emotions, how your mental health, how you handle things. Because you could have so much going on in your life, but you might find that every time you have some big news or something exciting in your life, happening in your life, that's when you start binge eating all over again or falling into certain habits that you try to stay away from because you find them to be dis destruct destructive and pull you back into a, cy a cycle that just robs you of your energy. So when it comes to what you need to know right now is that you are in an area of your life that's resting and a reflecting stage. You're not being called to do too much right now. And one of the biggest lessons for you to learn right now is being patient and just being in the moment of what is. Because the challenge that's coming up for you is the Empress energy. And the Empress talks about fertility and giving birth. And this could be you giving birth to a creation and a creative expression of yourself. Something that you once was think something that once was a thought that you worked on and then gave birth to into something tangible that you want to share with others. So with the Empress energy showing up here, this is a challenge because you're someone who likes to be in your masculine energy. And when I say like to be in your masculine energy, you like to do, do, do and get things done. You might find that when you're not working, doing and getting things done, you feel like the biggest loser. You feel like you're behind in life. You feel like you're not going to make it to wherever it is that you're trying to go. When I go back to the area of your life, the North Node energy is there. So this talks about destiny. Destiny is a big focus when it comes to what's happening in your life right now. So everything that you're being called to do, all the moves that you're being called to make, it's a big part of destiny. When I say destiny, meaning that the moves that you're being called to make, the things that you're pondering, that you're considering right now, these things are going to affect your life for years to come. So say the person who's deciding to move, this is just not any move. This is a big move. Say the person who's deciding to start this thing or the next, this is not just anything. This is a big thing. It could be a big thing for some because of the amount of resources that will get tied up in making it happen. Or just the shift that's needed that will hold you to that for a very long time. But I feel for most people who selected this, it's something that's necessary. It's something that you, you've always wanted. And I say most because some of us could find ourselves seeking glamorous callings and not allowing ourselves to be the main characters in our own reality and instead allowing other people to be the main characters in our reality. So when we allow other people to be the main character in our reality, then we imitate them, but we don't even realize we're imitating them because the mind could be so clever to where we can delude ourselves and assume, no, this is what I want, when in all reality, we might want the attention or the recognition or the love that we see someone else getting. And for you to want all that, those things mean that those things are meant for you. And those things are already yours, but it's a matter of being true to yourself and taking the path that speaks to you, the path that's important to you. And with the hangman energy showing up as the blessing, the hangman energy normally the hangman energy in the upright position is someone who is in a meditative state and choosing to reflecting. And with it in the reversal position as a blessing, whatever it is that you're going through right now is teaching you the importance of being still and being patient. It's teaching you meditation. If that's not something that you know how to do, what I found beneficial years ago was watching Oprah and Eckhart Tolle on Oprah's channel do like an Oprah class where they got together a couple 
for for a class where he talked about his book, The New Earth, and taught meditation. Meditation is very beneficial for you right now when it comes to the stage of your life you're in because you're being called to be still. And the blessing is you're learning to be still right now because there'll be other times in the future when you'll have to be still just like this one. But those times will be amazing because you'll learn all the tools that you're learning now to prepare yourself for those times. In the past, you've been in this phase in your life and this season in your life. But instead of being still, you found something to do. And finding something to do might have wasted money, resources, or even energy. So once things pick back up, and you were called to jump into action mode, you weren't even rested. This is where we find ourselves in one, one minute, we find ourselves one minute saying, wow, things are moving so slow. I need to do something. And then we jump and we start doing something, but we can't even complete it because things pick up. And now things pick up and we don't have enough energy, but we have to find that energy to do what we got to do because we weren't resting. And the thing that we left undone was a waste of money and resources because now we're called to go back to what it is that we have been doing that we agreed to do, but we were on break, but didn't want to acknowledge that, oh, this was just break. It was a resting phase. I looked out the window and a hawk flew by with something in, in its hand. I don't know if it's, what it is so that meant it just swooped down made a kill found food and it's flying to go and eat so this is telling me that you guys are entering into a, a time of your life where you're reaping rewards you're also entering into a, a, a receiving stage so right now you're in a resting reflecting but very soon you have to take some kind of action and then immediately after taking that action, you'll be receiving like no other. An example of that to me is say someone who went to school for something and they took the action, they went to school, they did the work, they learned the thing. Then they came out of school and they had to be more of like an apprentice, but get paid <clears throat> almost nothing, but it was really experience they were building for all this time. So now they're doing this job, building experience, and it's kind of boring because they've learned so much now and they're ready for a bigger challenge, but they're called right now to just be still and reflect and do what it is that they're doing. And then very soon, say a message or something will come in where this person is called to relocate. And the relocation is scary because it's somewhere they've never been. And they're wondering, will they like me? Will I be good enough? You know, that kind of talk. And the call comes for the relocation and they relocate to the new department or wherever. So they were called to take this bold action. They take the bold action and everything changes. Everything changes in the sense that their pay increases dramatically and other opportunities for money because of the networking and rubbing shoulder elbows and connecting with certain people. But not even just that, the work and the responsibility that comes with this major shift. So they went from waiting and reflecting to taking action to boom, receiving so much. Their whole life felt like it changed overnight, but it didn't because the moment they decided that they were going to go back to school or take the course or purchase the course, that was the moment it all started. And while they were going to school and or taking the course and doing their best to show up on time every day and turn in the assignments and pay attention and focus, all of that was a part of the hard work that they were doing. And now, boom. There's the reward. They take a chance and they're rewarded. So right now, just relax and be still because you will be called to take a chance 
and you will be rewarded. And the spirit animal, when it comes to moving forward, as we get ready to wrap this reading up, is the elephant. And with the elephant showing up as the spirit animal, the elephant talks about wisdom, but I think about the elephant and how big they are, so they move kind of slow. This is telling me to take your time. What's coming to mind is the saying that we have, Craven chokes puppy, meaning because you're greedy, you'll choke. So take your time. Take your time, pace yourself, and move slow and gracefully. Trust your intuition, which is this red, which is the third eye of the elephant. I don't know if that's a sapphire, emerald. I'm not sure. I'm not that. I'm not. I haven't put in the effort to be that verse with my stones. But the elephant is carrying a flame within the tusk. So this tells me to move slow and move with discernment. Don't get greedy when things start moving, when you're called to move. What comes to mind is someone that's been fasting for a while. So imagine you've been on a water fast for 30 days and you get a call that you can eat tomorrow. So tomorrow you try to eat everything you could possibly eat and then end up with a tummy ache because you didn't pace yourself and break your fast slowly and introduce food back into your world. So when you step out of this waiting phase, which feels like a reflection phase also, you're going to take quick action and then you're going to move into a life that just transforms, feels like an overnight transformation. When this happens, pace yourself, be patient. I, I, I see the person who comes in on, say, a lot of money. Money starts flowing like nobody's business. And instead of spending the money wisely, this person creates more challenges for themselves. And when I say create more challenges for oneself, instead of spending the money wisely, this person takes on all these different kind of responsibility to the point where, yes, their financial situation exploded 10 times, 100 times what it was, but they're still in a paycheck to paycheck situation. So instead of having, say, $3,000 a month responsibilities, now they have 20000 But it's like, yes, they can afford it, but every month that money is going to that. Now they're stressing themselves to make more, only to make more to create a bigger thing. So grace yourself, be patient. Be patient and move slowly. Take your time when it comes to the moving. Because I think of how big elephants are and when they fall, how that fall could be because they're so big. So that's something that's coming with you guys. Something about the shift that you're going to be experiencing will cause you to seem larger than life to a certain extent. That might not be for everyone. But for a few of you, some kind of transformation that's happening within your life will cause you to seem larger than life. And just pace yourself, move gracefully, and take things very, very, very slow. You guys, if you'd like to book a private reading with me or check out the exclusive weekly content that's posted only on Patreon, those links are in the description box below. If you're still here with me, I'd love to hear about it. Please let me know by dropping me a red heart in the comment box below. I would love to hear from you. Love yourself as if your life depended on it because it does. Take care of yourself and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.